Hello everyone, welcome to We Learn Eduk. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So today we are going to look at the scapula and the clavicle. Both are bones of the upper limb. So today what we are basically going to look at, we are going to look at the bone impressions and their orientation, attachments for muscles and ligaments, the movements associated with those bones, and lastly the clinical correlates with those two bones. So starting with the clavicle, as you can see, the clavicle is S-shaped, elongated S. So the scapula, its superior surface is smooth, inferior surface is rough because of attachments of muscles and ligaments. Now, the medial aspect of the clavicle, which is also known as the sternal end of the clavicle, is thicker and triangular in shape. And when you move laterally, its lateral end is flat and it's referred to as the lateral end or acromial end of the clavicle. Now, when you come to this clavicle, as you see, the clavicle medially to laterally, we shall realize that the medial two thirds, medial two thirds of the clavicle are, is convex anteriorly, and the lateral a third of the clavicle is concave anteriorly. So basically, you can divide the clavicle into three parts: medial, the medial, middle, and the lateral a thirds. But the medial two thirds are convex anteriorly and the lateral other is concave anteriorly so now well, let's look at the impressions in the inferior surface of the clavicle medially laterally so medially as you can see there is an oval impression this impression is for the attachment of the costal clavicular ligament this ligament joined the clavicle to the first rib then as we move more laterally we shall realize there is a groove that groove is known as the subclavius groove where the subclavius muscle attaches to the clavicle then as you move more laterally there is a tubercle here known as the coronoid tubercle now this coronoid tubercle is for attachment of the coronoid ligament or the coracoclavicular ligament now the coronoid tubercle extends laterally as the trapezoid line where the trapezoid ligament attaches, which can also be referred to as the. So we've talked about two ligaments. Okay? We've talked about the costal clavicular ligament. You've also talked about the coraco clavicular ligament. Then last, we also talked about the trapezoid ligament, which attaches on the trapezoid line. This trapezoid ligament is can also be referred to as a lateral coracoclavicular ligament. Now, let's look at the joints that clavicle forms with other structures. So, as I've said, medially we have the the medial end of the clavicle inferior to it, inferior to it as you orient, inferior to it aspect there is a, a facet where it attaches with the manubrium of the sternum through a joint known as the sternum clavicular joint which is synovial in nature but one thing to note is about not the entire medial aspect or the sternal end attaches only the inferior surface leaving the, the the majority palpable you can palpate it the the, the end of the the, the majority of the head you can palpate it. Then, when you move more laterally, laterally at the acromial end of the clavicle, there is what you call the acromial clavicular ligament, uh, joint, sorry, it's also shared, synovial in nature, whereby the acromial part of the clavicle attaches with the acromium of the scapula. So, we've looked at the bone impressions. Now, how do you orient this bone? When you look at this, I've talked about this, the sternal or medial end, lateral end. One thing to note, the superior surface is smooth, inferior surface is rough. Medial, two-thirds, two-thirds of the acromion is convex anteriorly. Lateral aspect is concave anteriorly. So this one is the right clavicle. It's the right clavicle. 
as you can see. Now we've looked at the bony impressions. Now let's look at the ligaments and the muscles that are attached to this bone. We've talked about the ligaments. We've talked about the costoclavicular ligament, which attaches at this point, the coracoclavicular ligament at the coronary tubercle, then the trapezoid ligament at the trapezoid line, then we talked about, now let's talk about the muscle that attach on the clavicle. Now starting, one thing you know that they have the pectoralis major muscle that has a clavicular head. Now this clavicular head will attach at the this surface of the clavicle. Then also we shall note that also the, the other muscle that could attach is the there's what you call the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now the sternocleidomastoid muscle, sternocleidomastoid muscle, it has a clavicular head. Now that clavicular head attaches at the medial aspect of the clavicle. Sternocleidomastoid muscle, the clavicular head. Now let's not come the clinical, the, the clinical correlates. So we're going to look at the movements together with the scapula. Now coming to the clinical correlates of the clavicle, sorry. Now this clavicle, we've seen that medial two-thirds and lateral third they meet at a point. That point is susceptible to fracture. Fractures that may result from direct pressure force on the clavicle. Also, it could be to folding on a stretched hand. It makes this part susceptible to fracturing. Now, what is the uh, result of the fracture? This fracture of the, assuming the middle and third of the clavicle fractures, it will result into, uh, you remember the supraclavicular, uh, supraclavicular nerve is related with the clavicle, so it could be ruptured. So now let's look at the scapula as a second bone. Now when you come to this, this is the scapula. Eh? It is triangular in shape. If you note, the, middle, the central aspect is thin. It is thin. Now this scapula, as you can see, it has got a medial border. A medial border, which is this, which could also be referred to as the paravertebral border. So let me talk about the parts of the of the scapula. So we say the scapula has the medial border, which is this, or the para vertebral border comes in association with the vertebral column. It has got the lateral border, which is thicker compared to the medial border, which can also be referred to as the axillary border, because it is in close association with the axilla. Now, the middle border and the lateral border together they form the inferior angle of the scapula. Now, let's look at the superior aspect. Superiorly, we have the superior border. And on the superior border, there is a, a point to know what you call that supra, supra, supra scapula notch. This supra scapula notch, as you can see with this, uh, later on you shall realize that the supra scapula notch is transversed by the transverse scapular ligament leaving a canal where the suprascapular nerve and the vein pass through but the suprascapular artery passes superior to the transverse clavicular ligament do you note that then this suprascapular notch where how is how do you orient how do you note it on the superior border the medial two-thirds and the lateral artery they, they join at the suprascapular notch another point to note is posteriorly Posterior surface to note is convex posterior, as you can see, or concave anteriorly. It's separated by the spine of the scapula. This is the spine. Now, the spine from its root it moves laterally and extends, flattens as the acromion process of the scapula. The acromion process. Of the scapula. Now, this acromial process, as you can see, together with the acromial process, which is, can be an attachment for some muscles. Now, when you move to the, now as you divide the scapula, there is the superior aspect, which is the supra spinatus fossa, which is an attachment for the supra spinatus muscle. So you have the supra spi. Ne, supraspinous fossa where the supraspinatus muscle attaches it's called a supraspinatus 
muscle attaches this one then you have this fossa which is the infra spin infra spinous fossa where are the infra spinous spinatus spinatus muscle attaches those are the two points to note then when you come anteriorly there's this one convex surface anteriorly which is known as the subscapular fossa now in this subscapular fossa the subscapular muscle attaches there so now let's continue now to other points on the scapula now laterally we, sh we shall re we shall note the glenoid cavity it's the glenoid cavity where the head of the humerus articulates uh, to form the glenohumeral joint the glenohumeral joint but one to note is this glenoid cavity is shallow so it makes the glenohumeral joint what not strong enough so there are other structures that force it to be uh strengthened so now another thing to note is that inferior to the glenoid cavity of the supra glenoid tubercle then superior you have the superior the supra glenoid tubercle then the superior border will extend superior border extends from the coracoid process this is the coracoid process but this coracoid process acts as attachment for some muscles for example the coraco clavic coraco costo uh, sorry that as attachment for some muscles in the arm then also another thing to note about this is the superior border superior superior border and the medial border from the superior angle of the scapula so we've looked at that at the bone impressions now how do you orient this bone so one thing to note is that the medial border lateral border is this, like this but the spine is located posteriorly as you can see this posteriorly so this one makes it a right scapula this is a right scapula because of the glenoid cavity facing laterally medial border and well, medially then the, the the spine mainly is posterior so this one makes it the right scapula so now you've looked at that too now let's look at the attachments the muscles and the ligaments that attach on the scapula so you've looked at the muscles already just to recap we have the supraspinatus muscle mm. infraspinatus muscle we have the subscapular muscle on the point to note on the medial border there are muscles that attach on the medial border there's a muscle that attaches in the inner aspect and the outer aspect so starting from the outer aspect of the medial border so we have that from superiorly to inferiorly first we have the the beta scapuli muscle the beta scapuli muscle then we have the rhomboid minor rhomboid major muscle so that's how they are the beta scapuli rhomboids minor and rhomboids major then there's one muscle that attaches on the inner aspect of the scapula the inner aspect what i mean is the inner margin that is the serratus anterior muscle so you have the serratus anterior muscle attaching on the inner aspect then the outer aspect we have the the theta scapulae then you have the rhomboids rhomboid minor then you have the rhomboid major so these muscles are in the outer aspect of the medial border this one is the inner aspect of the inner aspect of the medial border now let's come to the lateral border of the scapula now for the lateral border of the scapula we shall not two important muscles those are the teres major and the teres minor muscle the teres minor is superior the teres major is inferior so the minors rhomboids minor is superior rhomboids ma major is inferior teres major is minor is superior teres major is inferior that's one thing to note then what muscle attach attaches on that scap on the spine of the scapula so the muscles 
that attach there. So first of all, superiorly, you have that trapezius muscle attaching, have an attachment at this point. Then, in the inferior aspect, we have the inferior aspect, we have the deltoid muscle attaching. So, in the superior aspect, it is the trapezius muscle. You have the trapezius. In this superior aspect, we have the it extends from the spine to the acromion and inferior you have the deltoid muscle having an attachment there so we've looked at that attachment the muscle that attach at that point then another thing to note is that at the infraglenoid tubercle we have the the short head of the biceps attaching here that thing to note. Then at the supraglenoid tuber, we have the long head of the biceps brachii attaching at that aspect. So those are the muscles that some of the muscles that attach on that scapula. So we've noticed the muscle. So now let's look at the movements that are related with the scapula and the acromion and the clavicle. So if I'm to orient these two bones, so if I'm to orient this, so uh, uh, this is how it will be. That's how to do this because both are right sided. So the scapula can move up. That is what's called elevation of the scapula. It can move down. That is depression. Then it can move like this pronation, retraction. And those are the movements, some of the movements that are related to the scapula. Now let's look at the clinical correct of the scapula. Now the scapula, remember the inner aspect supplied by the serratus anterior. Now, the serratus anterior is supplied by the long thoracic nerve. It's called the long thoracic nerve. Now, this long thoracic nerve, now it comes from root C5, C6, and C7. Now, if it is injured, it implies that there will be a defect on the serratus anterior. And this results into a condition known as the wing scapula. So, we've looked at that bony impressions, attachment of muscles and ligaments, movements and the clinical correlates. At this point, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.